One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Photography now is about taking pictures. Years ago it was about processing film and making prints. We don't need prints in 2010 to communicate. We do it online, it's very fast. The thing with printmaking is it's about feeling the pictures. It's not good enough just to look at them. When you took your pictures, you were seeing it on paper in your mind's eye. My father introduced me to photography and to printing when I was about 10 years old. He built a dark room. It had a door with a lock and it was a private place. I could get away from the, from, from the family and just spend hours on my own making prints. I moved to London in the mid-90s and started working as a photographer. So I did a course in colour printing and started printing at a place called Photofusion, which is a higher dark room in Brixton. Back then it was incredibly busy. Lots of young photographers shooting for Days and Confused ID and then printing their own work. Gradually, over the last decade, it just got quieter and quieter at Photofusion. And one day I was there printing, printing a job and there was no one else there, so I was on my own. That was in uh, summer 2006. I just glanced at my enlarger, it caught my eye, and suddenly I thought, this is interesting, this machinery is not going to be around for so much longer. I decided that I wanted to do a photographic project about enlargers and about printing. This darkroom is Roy Snell's darkroom. It's in the basement, it's in the cellar of his home. It looks different from many of the other darkrooms I photographed. Photographers are out there in the real world battling against all the forces to try and get a life and take great pictures. So they'd all come back here. I mean, this cellar used to rock. We had a big fat stereo and it used to rock 24-7. I always encourage my clients to work with me. Often you do a print for a photographer and they put it in the bag and send it off. Whereas you give a print to an artist, they pin it on the wall and think, now where can I go with this? I was interested in professional or commercial darkrooms because these were spaces where the printers would work day in, day out. They had dedicated their whole lives to printing. A lot of London labs were closing in quick succession. Sky went, CETA went, Team Photographic went. The lab I was using to develop my film, that closed down. My objective was to document all the remaining professional darkrooms in London. The bottom line now is that we don't need to make prints to make our photographs visible. A print took two hours, so at the best we could do 16 prints a day. And that was a long day, it was like probably 10, 12 hours. Normally printers are quite private about their darkrooms. And e even if they're printing for a regular client, a photographer who uses them often, it's quite likely that the photographer would never actually go into the darkroom. Up until this project, I'd shot everything on medium format film and I decided I wanted more detail, so I had to move up a level and start shooting on large formats, 5x4 film. Everything is now unavailable. I can't buy the film anymore. Kodak stopped making the type of film. There's something called Kodak Ready Loads. Polaroid are no longer in business so I can't shoot Polaroids, and the camera itself, the company that makes the camera, has gone bankrupt. I'm not a Luddite. I have no problem with digital. The project was shot on film, it was scanned, and then it was output via a process that takes it back through chemistry. I think Roy has painted it this blue-green colour to counteract the redness of the, of the safe light. And it all looks a, a little bit Heath Robinson. This is where the printer stands, and this is where the printer performs. David Hockney's lovely story about David Hockney at the Royal College of Arts in his spare time. He gave painting classes, and uh, the story, as I heard it, was he had a group of students that were out there on the lawn with their boards painting away, and it was one week after another. And it arrived at the point where, on the last day, David said, OK, we'll burn them all now. And there was sort of a bit of an objection. Why do we want to burn all this effort? <laughs> and it was David Hockney's way of saying, you paint for the journey. It's about the journey. It's about the joy of painting. When you finish, you burn it. I don't want to burn my prints. I have a very large collection of prints here that I'm currently archiving.
but the point he was making was very much the fact that if you make a print, you get the benefit, and the next picture you take, you will see it better because you made prints. There was a strong sense when I was shooting film of being engaged with the city, meeting people, talking to people. With digital, it's rather different. And in a way, this project, on a personal level, it's an expression of that reluctance to move with the times.